Welcome to today's EM in 5. I'm going to be talking about AV Black. It's always a good topic to review, especially for board's questions coming up here. So this is basically everything you need to know for AV Black as far as the basics go. What you're looking for on your EKG is the PR interval. A normal PR interval should be 120 to 200. If it's greater than 200, as in a wide PR interval, that's essentially what you're looking for for AV block. And then you want to start going through these different criteria to see if you have a first, second, or third degree AV block. A first degree AV block is just that, a wide PR greater than 200. A second degree, you have two types. That's your type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is also known as the wanky back or Mobitz type 1. In type 1, you're going to have progressively prolonged PR intervals until finally one's dropped. So you're looking for that to keep getting longer, 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 and then dropped. In type 2, also known as Mobitz type 2, you just have intermittently dropped STs after your P waves. Um, and then third degree is your third type. That's a complete AV dissociation, meaning your P's and your QRSs have no relation to each other. You can march them out individually. I thought the best way to go through each of these is just to give you an example of each one. And I got these EKG examples from Amama 2's uh, ECGs for the emergency physician. This is from 2003 edition. You can find it on Amazon.com. Great book. So this is an example of a first degree block. Here again, you can just see that there are widened PR intervals. I'm just looking down at the rhythm strip at the bottom here. You can see here's a P, QRS, and it's definitely widened greater than 200. However, these are all fairly uniform as they go along, so we can say this is a first degree block. In this example of a second degree block type 1, this is where you're going to have that progressively prolonged uh, PR interval until you finally have one dropped. This is from case 12 from Machu's book. So I'm just going to go along this bottom here. So you have a P, QRS, P, QRS. Here's our first interval. You can see the second one widens up a little bit. This third one's even wider. And then finally you have a, a P with no QRS. And then it starts over again, starting smaller, gradually getting wider during each of these intervals here until finally you have a P with no following QRS. So that would be your second degree block type 1 or a wanky block. In this example of a second degree block type 2, in case 42 in the book, this is where you're going to have randomly dropped QRS waves. So I tried to point out examples here with the arrows. Here's a P and no QRS. Here's a P with a QRS, P, QRS, P, no QRS. And here again, it's P, QRS, P, no QRS. So you, there's just these randomly dropped ones, which I highlighted with the red arrows. That would be a second degree block type 2. And our third example, this is a third degree AV block with complete dissociation, meaning that the P's and the QRS's have no relation to each other. This is from case 149 in the book. I tried to uh, point out with the red arrows the P waves. So you have here, 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 here. And then I marched out on the bottom line. I usually do this. I took out on the top line the P's and the bottoms are the Q's. So here on the bottom is a QRS. QRS, QRS, and you can see that they have no relation to each other. So that would be a third degree block, complete AV dissociation. One last mention is just the difference in treatments between these, and I tried to, I highlighted here with a box um, two categories. Now this is very simplified, but I just wanted you to try to think about are these patients sick or not sick? The tendency is for the first degree blocks and the second degree type 2 are the uh, not as sick patients, that's, I mean, if they're not symptomatic, um, hemodynamically stable. There are exceptions to this, I'm just trying to simplify it. First degree and second degree type 1 are in the category of do nothing for treatment. Then you have Mobitz type 2 and the third degree, this is going to be your sick patients. Generally, treatment for this down the line, this is obviously not something you do in the ER unless they're currently unstable, but down the line with cardiology consult, of course, you're going to be thinking about a pacer long term for these patients. And I don't actually have a, a three to remember slide for this because I think this slide right here sums it all up. So uh, thank you again for joining us in EM and 5 today.